I was wondering what your definition of the separation of church and state is and how it will affect your decision making. Congressman Paul, does faith have a role in these public issues, the public square, or is it a personal issue in your home and in I, your I church? I think faith has uh, something to do with the character of the people who represent us. And law should have a moral fiber to it, and our leaders should. Uh, we shouldn't expect uh, us to uh, um, try to change morality. You can't teach people how to be moral. But the Constitution addresses this by saying, literally it says no theocracy, but it doesn't talk about uh, church and state. The most important thing is the First Amendment, that Congress shall write no laws, which means Congress should never prohibit the expression of your Christian's faith in a public place. Okay, great. I think the uh, issue is obviously very important, and we can charge one side or the other of, of influencing our culture too much. But the goal of government isn't to mold society and mold people. The, the role of government is to preserve liberty so we as individuals assume the responsibility and our families assume the responsibility. Our, our values should come from our family and from our church. But once, once we say, well, the liberals are doing this because they want this economic interference and we're going to have perfect balance and fairness, they overdo it. But you can do it on both sides. You can say, well, we're going to make people better by having more laws. I think culture is very important. Culture has a reflection on the law, and I think that is very good. But the law can't reflect the morality of the people. If you do that, you have embarked on something where you sacrifice liberty. Once you turn this over to government, when government assumes this role, it can only do that at the sacrifice of liberty. So our goal ought to be to preserve liberty so that we have our religious values and we make our own decisions. If we can make our self-determination for our hereafter and our spiritual life, certainly on our own personal habits and our economic habits and how we spend our money, certainly we should assume that the people can do this. The guidance should come from individuals, from our family, and from our church. You know, I think it's, it's wrong to assume that if you legalize liberty and freedom, that because somebody might do something wrong, you don't want to legalize it. Liberty doesn't mean libertine. It means you have choices, but you suffer the consequences. It does not mean endorsement. When you legalize freedom of choice, think about it in a religious sense. We legalize, and we do a pretty good job in this country on the First Amendment. We legalize our freedom of choice in our religious value. But in this country, you're even allowed to be an atheist. But if you say, well, there's the danger of being an atheist, so we can't legalize freedom of choice in religion, or we can't legalize freedom. Maybe somebody will want too many homeschoolers. So no, you want to legalize liberty. You don't want to designate what your beliefs are going to be because somebody might abuse it and they have to assume the responsibility for making the mistakes but because somebody might make a bad choice you don't say give up on liberty this is what the liberals do when they come to economics somebody might not make a good choice they might not take care of themselves they might not save for them for their retirement so therefore we have to be the protector we have to protect the people from themselves so I think overall the defense of liberty is really what we need in this country because we're losing it unfortunately I get to my God through Christ. Christ to me is a man of peace. He is, he is for peace. He's not for war. He doesn't justify preemptive declared war. I strongly believe that there is a Christian doctrine of just war. And I believe this nation has drifted from that. No matter what the rationales are, we have drifted from that. And it's very, very dangerous. And I see in many ways being unchristian. And to justify what we do in the name of Christianity, I think is very dangerous and not part of what Christianity is all about. Christ came here for spiritual reasons, not secular war and boundaries and geography. And yet we are now dedicating so much of our aggressive activity in the name of God. But God, he is the Prince of Peace. That is what I see from my God and through Christ, I vote for peace. I want to ask you about something that came up last night. You didn't get to weigh in. I'm going to let you weigh in now. This, this kerfuffle over Mitt Romney and, and his Mormonism and what Rick Perry said. I know you're looking like, what, what is that doing? Here, let me show you something that really astounded me, frankly, Congressman, that Newt Gingrich said last night. That there's a very central part of your faith in how you approach public life. And I, frankly, would be really worried if somebody assured me that nothing in their faith would affect their judgments 
Because then I'd wonder, where is your judgment? How can you have judgment if you have no faith? And how can I trust you with power if you don't pray? How can, I, how can I, you have judgment if you don't have faith? How can I trust you with power if you mm -hmm. don't pray? Are those, do those not astonish you, those statements? Yes, and I'm not sh quite sure exactly what's going through his mind, but it, it does stir your thinking on exactly. You know, the way I see this is uh, religious values. I, I, I'm a Christian, and I think it's important, um, but I, I don't believe that we should have a religious test for office, office obviously. And I think Do atheists it, not have a say if yeah. you don't believe well, in God? Well, the thing, uh, let, me, let me finish my thoughts. Okay. The, our religious values should affect our character, and our character should affect maybe the way you'll look at me. You know, if I have the proper character, then you might vote for me. If, you, if I don't, then you vote against me. But uh, I, I think what we, um, what we need to do, though, is uh, ask more questions about what's your interpretation of the First Amendment? See, I don't care about their personal, I take care about their character, and maybe it's related to their religion, but so, but, but, but maybe not, too, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe it's not. I mean, it's, an atheist can have good yeah, character, that, that right? that is true. Yeah. So the litmus test is, how do you interpret and how important do you think the First Amendment is? And that is where the test is, and that is where I think a lot of conservatives come up short because they vary it a lot. And they, they say, well, uh, you know, uh, it, it's good to have the First Amendment, but don't use it in a certain way. And, some, and sometimes they, they get freedom of speech mixed up. There's commercial speech and political speech, and they divide it up. And I want an understanding of what the First Amendment really means, uh, and certainly we should. This whole thing and I think the media frenzy feeds into this when this came up with Romney and Perry of, of, of subtly saying, well, we are going to have a religious test. And it's very only directly, the only reason I think religion is important is the reflection it has on character. And you are right, people can be ethical and have character even though they might not have what we call religious values. Well, well, but... We don't have the First Amendment, and most people recognize this, we don't have the First Amendment so that we can talk about the weather. You know, we, we have the First Amendment to talk about controversial things and say controversial, uh, express controversial ideas and criticize our, our leaders and all. Everybody, uh, everybody knows that. Um, but, and we know that it applies to our religion. You can have no religion or a lot of religion, as long as you don't force it on other people. We're not to have a theocracy. And, um, and, and we know that we shouldn't meddle with our intellectual life. We know that the government shouldn't meddle with our religious life, and our religious life has to deal with something pretty important, like our eternity and our salvation, and we uh, get to make our own choices what we do on that matter. I was wondering what your definition of the separation of church and state is and how it will affect your decision making. Congressman Paul, does faith have a role in these public issues, the public square, or is it a personal issue at your home and in your I, church? I think faith has uh, something to do with the character of the people who represent us. And law should have a moral fiber to it, and our leaders should. Uh, we shouldn't expect uh, us to uh, um, try to change morality. You can't teach people how to be moral. But the Constitution addresses this by saying, literally it says no theocracy, but it doesn't talk about uh, church and state. The most important thing is the First Amendment, the Congress shall write no laws, which means Congress should never prohibit the expression of your Christian faith in a public place. Okay.